Welcome fellow business brokers. Today we're going to talk about how somebody can buy a small business with their 401k and not have to pay any penalty on the money they're taking out or pay taxes on that on that money. So I'm really excited about doing this. What we're going to be talking about is called a rollover business startup. An acronym for it is ROBS. It's called ROBS, um, ROBS 401k. A lot of people just call it ROBS. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a really, really uh, in-depth conversation that we're going to have. And if you really want to understand how the ROBS 401k program works, you really, really, you must watch this entire video to really understand everything that's involved and all the, all, all the vital points that you need to know. So hang in there, brace yourself. It is gonna be a long video, but I think it's gonna be very, very informative and hopefully we can make it as educational as we possibly can, but just hang in there. And just before we begin, I just wanna say this. If you've been watching these, these videos and you have not subscribed yet, Take a minute, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. It's not only good for me, but it's for, good for you. I don't want you to miss any videos on, on great videos on how you can buy and sell business or help people buy and sell businesses. So make sure you subscribe. And what I really want you guys to do today too, as well is comment on the YouTube video, because I really want to understand what business brokers are seeing out there when it comes to the ROPS 401k. Is this like, if, if you've never had a buyer do this, I, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking most of us business brokers have never had a buyer that's actually used the ROPS 401k. So I want to kind of see, have we experienced that? And, and if you have experienced that, I want to know, you know, what your experience was. Was it good? Was it bad? How did it work with the buyer? And educate all of us. So that's where I want to begin. I'm very, very excited right now because because we've got Adam Bergman with us. He's from IRA Financial. Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. Tim, pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey, Adam, let's just jump right into it. Adam, can you give us like a 60-second rundown overview of what the Rob 401k is all about? Sure. So the Rob's uh, Rollover Business Startup Solution is the only legal way one can use their retirement funds to invest in a business uh, that they are personally involved in. So it's pretty simple. The ROBS only involves two parties, a 401k and a C corporation. That's it. So basically, how does it work? A new corporation set up, C corp, it adopts a 401k plan. The client then rolls over his or her IRA funds tax-free into the new 401k. The 401k then buys stock in the company in return for the cash. So the cash goes from the 401k to the corporation, and then ultimately the corporation has the money to buy the business. Simple as that. And, and this is all legal and it's okay with the IRS or? Yeah, so this is based off an exception in the tax code under 4975 D13. So 4975C is in Charlie are all the prohibited transaction rules, things you cannot do with an IRA. And 4975 D is in David are all the exceptions to the prohibited transaction rule. So yes, D13 allows a 401k to purchase what's known as qualifying employer securities, which is C-Corp stock. So yes, it was put in the tax code in 1974, essentially to allow employees of companies that have a 401k to use some of their retirement money to buy stock in the company they work for. And structure has been around since you know, 1974. It's become a very common approach for using retirement money to buy businesses for small to mid-sized businesses, really over the last 25 years. You know, I've done a thousand plus of these. I've written a book on this called Turning Retirement Funds into Startup Dreams. So it should be more mainstream, uh, but it's getting there. Yeah, I, and I think business brokers, this would be a great thing for us to have in our toolbox when we're talking to buyers and have another way for somebody to buy a business. And so any of you guys are not familiar with what happens with a uh, 401k, uh, if, you, if you pull that money out early, you're looking at what, a 10% uh, penalty on that, right? So if somebody's pulling out fifty thousand uh, uh, dollars uh, out of their four hundred one k and they get a ten percent penalty, you know it's five thousand dollars right off the bat, and then they also have to pay taxes on it. So if they're in a twenty four percent income tax bracket, you know that's going to be another what twelve thousand dollars on a fifty thousand dollar takeout. So between the twelve thousand and the five thousand, that's seventeen thousand dollars that they're going to be paying in taxes and penalty 
uh, out of fifty thousand dollars. So it's really it's really really high. So you know what Adam's talking about with the, with the Rob's four hundred one k is that you know you can use that money and pull it out you know penalty free, tax free, uh, everything like that. So you know it's really great. So you can use the Rob four hundred one k for SBA loans, right? Absolutely, Jim. You can use the Rob's. Most people use the Rob's as a down payment on a transaction, um, specifically including an SBA loan. And the reason for that is there's $30 trillion of retirement money, 30 trillion. So most people are cash poor, but retirement rich. And the reason for that is it makes sense to save in a retirement plan because of the power of tax deferral and compounding interest. So that's why most people save in a retirement plan versus a taxable account. So whether it's an IRA or 401k, you're going to see a lot of people that you're transacting with or interacting with on the business side are going to have money in a retirement account and it will be available to be used to purchase a business. So the key is to ask the right questions. I can't tell you how many people I talk to that I come across in just everyday life. For example, my kid had a birthday party last year and he got one of these arcade trucks to come to our house. And I was talking to the lady, she said it's, she just bought this business from someone else. And I asked her, hey, do you have any retirement money? She's like, yes, I heard about the robs. Problem is I heard about it too late and I had mm. to take a taxable distribution and it cost me you know, $35,000, which I would have loved to save and done the robs. Wow, that's huge, $35,000 hit. Huge. So this, this is good, good, good ammunition uh, for a business broker to have um, because there are options. Um, again, you should ask your clients, do you have a retirement money? Do you have an IRA? Do you have a 401k from a former employer? If they do, right away you should be thinking, okay, you have some options. If you're short for cash, you have some options. But there's another really exciting taxable benefit to do a ROBS. And that is the 401k actually owns the company stock. So if the client sells the business for a profit and sells the stock, guess what? All the gain goes back to the 401k without tax. So not only are you getting tax-free penalty-free use of the funds to buy the business, but if the business is successful and the business is actually sold at some point, the seller of that business can have the funds go to the 401k, the stock owner, without tax. No capital gains, no ordinary income, tax deferred and tax free, which is another great bonus. That is, that, that is awesome. That is excellent. Adam, I want to tell you why I like it as a business broker. Just like you said, you know, the situation is a lot of people out there have money in their 401k or retirement program, but they do not have cash on hand. So you look at this and you put it in conjunction with an SBA loan. Let's just put a, a, a scenario through. You need what? Right now you need 10% down on an SBA loan. And so, you know, let's say you want to buy a business for a million dollars. You need $100,000 cash down payment with an SBA loan to buy that business for a million dollars. If that buyer's got $100,000 sitting in their retirement account and they use that $100,000, and then, you know, let's say on a million dollar business, it's $350,000 discretionary earnings or owner benefit or, you know, whatever the owner is going to be able to take from the business after the paying their interest and their principal, you know, they're clearing $230,000 a year on a hundred thousand dollar payment. They came out of their, out of their, uh, out of their Rob's 401k, which, you know, that's why I like it, Adam. I just think there's a lot of flexibility there. Yeah. And, and on top of that, you're investing in yourself, right? That's the end of the day. You're investing in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you believe in the business you want to buy, you get to invest tax-free penalty for use of those funds in a business that you operate. So not only do you get to buy that business, you get to take a job, earn a salary, use your retirement money to buy yourself a job in essence. Plus, hopefully you have some tax-free growth when you sell the business dividends from the C-Corp back to the 401k without tax. And if you sell the stock of the, of the C-Corp, all the gains will go back to the 401k without tax. That's excellent. That's excellent. By the way, that scenario I gave, I was just assuming like five and a half percent interest. Da, 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 da. Um, and by the way, if 
you want to learn more about SBA lending and how that works because, you know, obviously the, the, the Rob's 401k plays in with the SBA. You, you can do it on its own. You can buy a business just with the, with the Rob's 401k, but if you really want to leverage and maximize things, you can use it with in conjunction with an SBA loan and use it as a down payment. If you want more information about SBA loans, there is a video of mine called uh, SBA Loans Explained. And I really highly urge you guys to watch that. We had three SBA lenders in on that. Um, I'm going to be talking in a minute to, I'm going to be asking Adam in a minute how much it costs to do this up front and how much it costs down the road to keep it going. I'm going to ask him that in a minute, so hold on. But first, I want to ask you a few other questions, Adam. Um, what retirement accounts can somebody use for the, for, for the ROPS 401k? And what retirement accounts can they not use? Okay, it's a great question. So pretty much you have almost every type of IRA can be used in this context. So a traditional IRA, SEP IRA, simple IRA, a former employer 401k. The only IRA that cannot be used is a Roth IRA. Why? Because Roth IRAs cannot be rolled into 401k. So that is the only limitation. Otherwise, any pre-tax IRA or any former employer 401k. When I say former employer, the reason is if you have a 401k from a current employer and you are under the age of 59 and a half, unless you leave your job, you're likely not going to have access to those funds because you need what's called a triggering event. So it's key that if you talk to a prospective client that it's from an IRA or a former employer 401k, if the individual is going to be leaving their job to buy this business, then that's also okay because ultimately when they leave the job, they'll have access to these funds. Okay, great, great. Can you get, tell us how, kind of how the process works, like you know, briefly how the, how the process works We get an idea? Right. I know so, you kind of touched that in the beginning. Yes, sir. So three steps. I mean, the first step is you want to work with a good business broker, I think, right? You want to do your diligence. You want to figure out what you want to buy. That's the most important thing. I always tell clients, the success of the business has nothing to do with me. It's going to have everything to do with you. So make sure you work with a professional that can help you buy the right business at the right price, like a business broker who knows what they're doing, who knows the business, who knows the industry, who can give you good advice. That's and formulate the a team with an, with an attorney and a uh, financial advisor as well. Sorry yes. to interrupt, Adam. Yes, that's key, right? You know who you're working with. There's a reason you guys are in business. The reason your mm -hmm. industry is important is because you know what you're doing. So the number two is once you've decided what you want to buy and you figure out the financing and you have made an offer and you expect to close within you know, 30 or 60 days, second step is you form a corporation. It has to be a C Corp, not an LLC, not an S Corp, not a partnership. It has to be a C Corp. Why? Because unfortunately the tax code requires that stock is purchased. So President Trump in 2017 lowered the corporate tax rate from 35 to 21%. So actually having a C Corp is not very tax un disadvantaged now. It's actually quite tax advantageous. So the corporate tax rate has been dropped from 35 to 21. So once the C-Corp is established, step two, step three, simply adopt the 401k. You work with a company like IRA Financial who can help set up the C-Corp, but primarily will help you set up the 401k and then have the 401k ready to receive the rollover from either the pre-tax IRA or your former employer 401k. So once the money has been moved tax-free from wherever it sits now in an IRA or 401k and to roll tax-free into the new 401k, at that point, it's quite simple. The 401k buys the stock in the C-Corp. Generally, the C-Corp's a shell company um, because it's gonna be the new entity that's going to buy the assets or stock of the existing business, okay? So it could be an existing C-Corp, but it's most common that it's a new C-Corp. And then the cash will move from the 401k to the C-Corp. In exchange, the C-Corp will give the 401k stock. So at the end of the day, you have a situation where the C-Corp is owned, let's say, 90% you know, by the 401k, 10% by other investors or the individual himself or herself. And yeah, the because the startup costs of the person, if, if the person invests startup costs, 
If I'm going out and I'm getting the, uh, uh, using my 401k for, for, for a Rob's 401k and I'm pulling that money out, when I, if I invest some personal money that I did not have in my retirement program, then I can get some of that stock personally as well that's not affiliated with the 401k, right? Exactly. So let's say you're okay. going to put $90,000 of 401k money in and you're going to put $10,000 of cash in um, and it's because you want 100000 bucks sitting there to get your deal done. So yeah, the stock will be on 90-10, right? 90 shares to your 401k, 10 shares to you personally. The company now has 100000 in cash available and it then enters into the transaction to buy the business. What I want to say, because when we hear C Corp, that's the one thing that gets through us as business brokers. We're thinking double taxation, double taxation, double taxation is horrible. We don't want to do a C Corp. I don't want to do a C Corp. I guys want to remind you, anybody that's watched that video, and I'm, I'm not trying to plug all these YouTube videos, but they do play into, play into each other. It's watching all these different YouTube videos. If you watch that YouTube video that I did a couple weeks ago, it was called Taxes and the Sale Businesses. Taxes and the Sale Businesses. Dr. Basie, and I think anybody that's a business broker in this country that's practicing at all or trying to stay educated knows who Dr. Basie is. He's incredible, wealth of wealth of information, wealth of knowledge. He's a financial expert. That's what he thinks people should be using right now as a C-Corp because just like Adam said, it went from 34% down to 21% um, on the taxes, but also right now, they have the ability to, it's going to help them if they sell in the future if they buy a business in 2020. So I just want to move on. Uh, can, does it have to be an asset sale or stock sale or can you can it be an asset sale or a stock sale? It doesn't matter. Yeah, asset or stock, however you uh, structure it, there can be seller financing, SBA financing, uh, whatever you want. No, no rules. Okay. So what's the minimum amount that somebody should be pulling from the retirement account to really make sense to make this happen? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think if I can just touch on this for a minute, there, you have three options. If you have retirement money and you're dealing with a client who wants to buy a business, and we could do another you know, video on this on, on itself because it's a really interesting topic, but you have three options. on that, Adam. <laughs> yeah, you got three options. So number one, you could take a taxable distribution, right? If someone comes to you and says, hey, I need money to buy the business, and you say, hey, do you have retirement money? And they say, yes. First thing you can ask is, okay, how much? Now, if they only have... 30, 40, 50 grand, um, they have two options. They can take a taxable distribution, pay tax and 10% penalty if they're under 59 and a half. If they're over 59 and a half, just tax. Number two, you can say, okay, how much do you need? If they only need 50,000 or less, then what we can do is set up a 401k plan for the business and they can just do a loan out of the 401k and they can borrow tax-free, penalty-free 50,000 to use to buy the business. Okay, so that's an option if you need less than 50K. I would say, to answer your question, Jim, if you need more than 50K, you should look at the ROBS. Under 50K, think about either a taxable distribution or the loan feature, which I would probably recommend because you're basically getting tax-free penalty for use of the money and you're paying your 401K back. So it's a double benefit. Okay, so in summary, the ROPS 401k is good if you're going to be pulling out approximately $50,000 or more just because the costs that are involved in setting it up. That's where it kind of makes sense. But if, if, you're, if somebody's going to pull out less than that uh, to, to start a business, you, there's other options that you can, you can talk to them about and work with them on. Correct. Is that correct? All right, excellent. Absolutely. So is, is there certain types of businesses that um, you're – okay, so what businesses can somebody buy and what kind of business can somebody not buy with a Rob's 401k? Uh, any legal business, <laughs> anything <laughs> that doesn't break the law, you can do. And, and I've seen them all. I've done, like I said, uh, I've done over a thousand of these. I've seen uh, like from bars, tea shops to adult entertainment uh, facilities to amusement parks to um, manufacturing, uh, er everything. And so anything that has products and services, you can, you can buy. But I mean, one thing you can't do is you can't do an investment company or something. It has to have products and services, correct? Right. It needs to be treated as a business. So it could be, I've seen people do deals where they, they bought uh, an apartment complex or they bought a motel or a hotel or a storage facility. Yes. Um, I wouldn't do this to buy a house and live in it. That would be yeah. something I would not do because that seems more like an investment than a business. Right, right. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, and can the, and I know the answer to this question, but uh, let's touch on the fact that this cannot be absentee owned. And, uh, you know, tell us what the requirements are for the person using their, the ROBS 401k to buy a business. Right. So the good news is, as part of the ROBS, in order to be a part of a 401k, 
you need to be an employee of the business, right? Like I always give this example. I own Apple stock, but I can't be part of the Apple 401k because I don't work at Apple. So the same rules apply here. In order to use your 401k to buy the business, you need to be an employee of the business, which for most people is not an issue because they're doing this primarily because they believe in what they're doing and they're going to be actively involved in the business anyways. But you need to take some type of uh, reasonable salary from the business. Okay, great. And you have to work, what, on average about a thousand hours a year, right, in the business approximately. Right. Which exactly. comes out about 20 hours a week. So. Right. You know, I I've had clients do this where it's a part-time gig. You know, they, they have a real job at company X, Y, and Z, and they're investing in this business. Um, they're going to put in whatever, 20, 25 hours a week. Um, that's okay. You don't have to make this your exclusive business. Uh, you can have salary and employment and other capacities. It just needs to be a real business that you but work But you have in. to be working. You have to, but the person has to be working in the business, right? Right. I mean, again, I don't, from an IRS standpoint, as long as you're paying tax on your compensation, the IRS isn't going to care if you're, um, you know, clocking in or clocking out. Uh, okay. The most important thing, if you're treating it as compensation, that's all that matters. All right, and let's talk about family members real quick. Uh, you can't, you can't buy it right as a uh, uh, for your your spouse or your son or your wife, your son or your daughter, and and give them stock in the company. I mean, only people that can actually have stock in the company are the ones that actually put money up, right? Uh, well, again, it's like any business. Now, um, the one difference- They have to uh, invest though, right? Or no? Yeah, yes and no. So the one difference is a self-directed IRA, which a lot of people talk to and say, Adam, what are you talking about? This robs doesn't make sense. I read always about self-directed IRAs and it says an IRA cannot invest in a business that you are personally involved in. That's right. An IRA cannot do that. And remember I mentioned 4975C as in Charlie. That covers all those types of situations. However, 4975D has this specific exemption for 401ks and corps. So to answer your question, you can have family members as owners of the stock because once you avail yourself of an exception in 4975D, then you're doing a regular business investment. The 4975C prohibited transaction rules don't apply. So if, yes, if you want to grant your children or your spouse um, restricted stock or stock options, I guess just like any other business in America, so long as you satisfy the stock option grant rules, you can do it. All right, great. Well, that's something I didn't know. I was wrong on that. Thanks a lot, Adam. So yeah. let's, let's get into the fun questions right now. And I think these are the next few questions are the questions that business brokers right now are really thinking. And I'm seeing our Q&A board coming up when we're doing this live, asking questions like this. So how long does this process actually take? From the, if, if somebody called you up today and said, hey, Adam, you know, I want to do a, a Rob's 401k. I want to buy a business uh, with my 401k and I don't want to, you know, pay, pay penalty or taxes on that. And they said, I want to do this. How long until you could have, you know, cash available for them to buy a business? I would say a couple of weeks. Uh, really the paperwork, I can set you up with a 401k in a day. I'm not worried about that. Uh, we have a trust uh, company where we can open the account. Uh, it's more about the movement of cash, right? If you have an IRA, a Schwab or Fidelity or uh, Mass Mutual, um, that is the delay, right? Does it take three days, seven days, 10 days to move the money from the IRA to the new 401k? I would generally say 14 to 20 days, you're gonna have the cash in hand, ready to go. That's really good. Yeah. Okay, so what kind of cost do we, you know, what's the kind of cost for somebody to do this, that to hire somebody like you? Yeah, so the setup fee is generally about 2,500 bucks, including the cost of the C-Corp and the 401k and all the miscellaneous corporate documents to actually get the whole structure done. And then after year one, you're looking at basically anywhere from a thousand to 1500 bucks uh, administration to record keep the plan, depending on how many employees, you know, uh, if you're gonna have 10 plus employees looking at about $1,500, uh, which uh, you can pay as a tax deductible business expense. That's every year you have to pay that. You have to pay a recurring fee for that. All right. Right. Excellent. Cause we have to file what's called an IRS form 5,500, which is the information form on the 401k. And also we're going to have to do the plan testing whether you're doing a safe harbor 401k or just a regular traditional 401k, there's still uh, you know, top-heavy non-discrimination testing we have to do. 
And you might have to do bonds, right? You might have the bond that you have to get there, a fidelity bond. bond, which is like a hundred bucks every two years. Not a big deal. So, so a fidelity bond is basically saying that, you know, cause what you're doing is you're holding other people's 401k. Now your employees 401k money, um, because you have to offer the 401k to employees and some might take it up. Some may not. I would imagine that most employees do not take up, take up, right? Most do not. Uh, it depends. I mean, I suggest, I think, listen, I'm obviously biased. I think having a retirement plan is a great option. I think it's a great way to retain employees. It's an excellent a, way to retain employees. Yeah, it's a great way to also attract employees. And it's a good thing to do to offer people retirement benefits, including yourself. So I think I suggest what's called a safe harbor 401k, which are the most popular types of 401k since 1999. And basically it says this. A safe harbor 401k lets the business owner max out his or her 401k, 19,500, 26,000, if they're over 50 for 2020. And all they need to do is provide a minimum contribution to each employee, typically around 3%. So if someone makes 30,000 bucks, you would have to make a 3% safe harbor contribution or $900 tax deductible to the business. Um, and that will allow the business owner to max out his or her retirement plan. All right. All right. Excellent. I think we touched on two things that I want to slow down and I want to go back and touch on those two things. But before we do that, I just want to let you guys know that, that coming up, I want, to, I want us to be talking about, uh, you know, how the owner can take the money out of, of the business when they make it. Um, there's things that they can do and there's things that they can't do uh, when it comes to the ROPS 401k. And it's different than normally when, when, when somebody owns a business. We're going to get to that in a minute. So make sure that you continue watching the video because that's really, really important information. But let's backtrack for a second. So, you know, they're going to have to, that, that you, have the, you have the upfront cost, which is about $2,500, right? And then it's about $1,500 a, a year to keep things up. They're going to have to do annual filing, right? They're going to have to do the fidelity bond, which, you know, it doesn't cost that much, but it's important to do because you are holding 401k monies. And if somebody did something scrupulous, you have to have the monies there to pick it. And then what about valuation? How often do you have to do evaluation? Is that just up front? Evaluation on the business? Is that just up front yeah. or do you have to do that every year? So generally, if you're using a ROBS, you'd want to get a business valuation. Why? Because the 401k owns stock in the business, right? So your 401k account includes stock it owns of the corporation. So we need to value that in order to file the 5,500. So generally uh, we have a variety of, you know, very inexpensive appraisers that could value um, the business and, and thus your stock. I would, I would assume that generally anywhere from five to 700 bucks a year, I would include that additional fee for a valuation letter. Okay. And it's really, really important that the, this, the filing happens and that all this stuff happens because the person that is doing it could really get nailed tax wise by the IRS if they're not doing this properly. So they need to not only engage somebody like you up front, but they need to continue to engage somebody like you every, every, every year. And really it's not that much money, but they got to make sure that everything's done properly. I's dotted, T's crossed, things like that. Right, Adam? Yeah, and we do it all. Like we're, we're a, a TPA, third party administrator. We have over 1500 plans we administer from small little plans to um, you know, police departments and fire departments. So we will take care of all the administration. The client will not have to file anything with the IRS. The only thing the client will need to do is provide a valuation of the business. Uh, we will take care of everything else, do all the plan testing, all the filings. So there's really no stress from a, the client's perspective. And then you do, and then just the second thing I wanted to talk about that we touched on is the employees. You do have to offer uh, the employees 401k program in the, in the business as well, right? You have to offer it. And I agree with you, Adam, completely that that's a great thing. The retention of the employees is very high. Um, I also think that most employees will not take it. Um, not with the type of businesses that, that we sell as business brokers. I, I would imagine most would not take it, but the ones that do take it, they're probably the more responsible ones. They would be, uh, and, and, and it's going to retain them better. And I love the fact that it's also forcing the small business owner to, you know, take money and put it back in the 401k too, because you know how um, we know as most small business owners, they don't do that. So I, mean, I love that, that, that that is forced as well. So the employees, they have to be what? w 2 right? Correct. And, 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 um, you only have to offer it to them if they worked in the business for a year or longer, I believe. You can do, you you want, can do right? it earlier, but that's... We can do 30 days. We can do a year. We can do whatever the business owner wants to do. We can customize it. The minimum amount is 30. 
uh, days. The maximum is a year. It's only for W-2s, not 1099s. Um, so, so that's good. And we also can structure the plan in a variety of ways. Um, we can also structure it where if the employees do not put any money in the plan and refuse to participate, then the employer does not have to make any deferral contributions on behalf of the employee. So that's another benefit that we can really customize this plan to satisfy the needs of the business and the business owner. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay, so let's talk about this because I think this is really important. How is the owner now going to be able to take money out of the business? I mean, I know that there's kind of, there's some rules and regulations on how they can take the money out and how it's, and so please explain that to us, Adam, because this okay. is really, really important. You got it. So a couple ways, just, you know, I'm, I'm a tax attorney, so I can, I don't want to get too in the weeds with a, a C corp, but a corporation is not an LLC. Um, there's a couple differences between a corporation and an LLC. Corporation, the way it sends money to its shareholders is by way of a dividend, okay, where LLCs can make distributions of profit or distributions of cash to the members. So let's focus on the C corp. Well, how can you get money out of your business? Well, number one, salary right? You can always take more money as bonus, as a W-2 salary, you'll pay income tax on that, but that's one way to take cash out. Number two, dividends, right? Dividends are of retained earnings. So let's take an example. A C corporation has a hundred dollars of net, net, net profits, right? After salaries, after rent, after expenses, it pays 21% tax. Okay. Let's just assume no state tax to keep things simple. Right, so it's got $79 left, right? Um, now what happens? Well, you can keep the money in the business, no problem, and then use that money to invest in other business um, investment. Equipment and things, yeah, to grow the business. Well, equipment, whatever yeah. you want, or just leave it in there and kind of sit in the bank and, and wait for uh, another opportunity. Or you can issue a dividend to the 401k, pro rata, right? If the 401k owns 90%, then 90% percent of that dividend will go to the 401k and a dividend to your 401k that you put in there to begin with. Right. Cause your 401k right. is the owner, right? So let's go mm -hmm. back to our example, hundred shares, 90 shares owned by the 401k, 10 shares owned by the individual owner. And let's say there's a $79 of cash sitting in the business as retained earnings. 90% of that will go to the 401k tax-free dividends to 401ks are tax-free. So the money will go back to the 401k. It's not a double tax at that point. The double tax comes later when the 401k participant takes a distribution, whether they're right. close to at 72 or they just need the money at an earlier time. But it's a delayed double tax. Whereas if the dividend came to me as an individual, I'm going to pay maybe 15% of the qualified dividend on that dividend, and that's my double tax. So the beauty of using a 401k is there's no double tax on the dividend. The double tax comes, could come years and years and years later when there is a distribution taken out of the 401k. Great. So, you know, I think this is the easy way to think of it is, is, is what Adam's saying. Let's say that, you know, uh, to begin with, the, the, the person takes 90% uh, of the monies required to start the business out of the 401k. They set up the 401k, and, uh, uh, Rob 401k, and then they take uh, $10,000 in savings that they had. They put it up there. It's just like, it, you got to think that, that, Rob's, that, that, that Rob's 401k or that 401k, you got to look at that as almost that's an investor that invested money, even though it was your money, think of it as an investor. So when you take that profit, you can't take all that profit personally. You have to take, you know, you take your 10% that you invested from your savings account, even though the other 90% was from your 401k, you have to, that you got to look at that as an investor and you're paying that 90%, just like any investor, they would want their money too. And you, well, you have to pay yourself a, 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 uh, a, a, an average salary, but you can't take bonuses of, and, and have things like that, right? Right. So this business will run- A market value salary, but then you can take things as bonuses. Right. This business will operate, once you do the ROBS and you avail yourself of the exception, this business will run like any other business in America. Okay. Forget about the 401k. Forget about the ROBS. You operate this business like any other business. You file an 1120 tax return. Okay. You, you, you run the business. You pay payroll, you pay taxes, you file tax returns, you do what you got to do to survive and, and operate this business. 
forget about Rob's, right? This is the same business. The yep. only time you really think about Rob's is uh, on the setup and on the exit, right? Whether it's by dividend or whether it's by a sale of the business stock, that's when the Rob's comes into play in terms of tax benefits. We went, we're gonna talk about who should be doing this and who should not be doing this. So make sure you hold, you hold on and keep watching because there's, there's people that should not be doing this, the Rob's 401k. But uh, let's touch on that real quick, uh, Adam, since you brought it up, exit strategy. You know, let's say that you do this and it's 15 years down the road and you're 67 years old, or you know, what are the exit strategies that you can do with a Rob's 401k? Yeah, the exit strategy, I just spoke to a client a few days ago. Um, it's, it's like any other business owner, you want the, the liquidity event, the sale of stock, right? So that's the huge capital event that you're looking for. The beauty is if you do it- And, and we it, come back in here again, us business burgers, <laughs> yeah, that's it. to help sell. That's, right? that's what we're, this is what people want to buy a business for. Yes, you believe in something, you have passion about something, you want a salary, but again, our, our dreams are all about a liquidity event selling the business for 10 times what we bought, bought it. And mm -hmm. that happens. And the beauty is if you do it well in the Robs, it's even more tax advantageous because there's no capital gains. There's no ordinary income. It's tax deferred right into your 401k. And if you convert your 401k to Roth, it's tax free, which a lot of people, and that's another strategy we can talk about how some people convert their 401k stock they own in the C-Corp to Roth at a discounted valuation like COVID because businesses values have dropped. And then hopefully they sell it and they have tax-free growth in the 401k. All right. Excellent. So I, you know, I want to touch on this as far as, um, you know, people that should be doing this and people that shouldn't be doing this. I, you know, I, I guess common sense is, you know, somebody that's close to retirement age, um, maybe they, they shouldn't do it. And, and the other thing is, I, I don't want to, I want to bring this up because I think if, if you do research online and you start reading about uh, Rob's 401k and people buying businesses, small businesses, people buying small businesses with their 401k and not getting paying penalty and not paying taxes and things, you're going to read horror stories about people that, you know, lost their entire, uh, you know, retirement funds because they did this and, and they lost everything. Um, you know, you've got to have the business acumen. You got to have the, the, the skill inside yourself to be able to do this and operate a business. It's just, it's not because it's the Rob's 401k. You could be getting a loan. You could be borrowing money from uncle Tom. It could be money you're coming from savings, whatever it is. You have that opportunity. You, you have, there's that, the, the, that thing that you're going to fail. And that's what we hear the most about is the ones that are, that are failures. And, you know, to me, you know, I, I think owning a business, first of all, is, is an American dream. And, uh, you know, that's what this country's built on. And I think Adam said it the best earlier when he said, you know, invest in yourself and have faith in yourself. And I think that you can, you know, obviously you can do the Rob's 401k by starting a business from scratch. But if you buy an existing business or the person buys an existing business, they're more likely going to succeed with that business because they're buying a turnkey business, a business that's already generating revenue that already has employees in place, trained employees in place, that's already got a customer base, that's got the, the supplier chain, that's got everything in place. And you're just coming in as a turnkey operation, you're putting the key in the door, you're turning it, you're more, much more likely to succeed. Now, if you just got some wacky idea that you want to start some strange business, you know, maybe you shouldn't do it. Adam, do you want to add anything to that about, you know, who should not be doing this? Right. So quickly, I'll just touch on. So the IRS, if you do um, Google around and check, they came out with a memorandum in 2008. And basically, their concern with this, Jim, is as you mentioned, unfortunately, not all businesses succeed. Okay. And, and not a lot of people realize this, but the IRS is actually a partner in your retirement account. Why? Because when you hit 72, you have to take what's called required minimum distributions, meaning you give back about 3% of your IRA value each year to the IRS. So if you start with a hundred grand, but now you bought an ice cream shop in Alaska and it's now down to zero, guess what? The IRS just lost taxation on a hundred thousand dollars. So that is why they care. They don't really care what you do with your money. They only care that it's not depleted down to zero so they lose tax revenue. So Jim, I'm with you. This is America. The rules are the rules. If the IRS didn't want you to buy a business, they can tell you it would have been in the tax code. You should be allowed to invest in what's allowable investment and the IRS nor any government agency should tell you how you should invest your money. 
So yes, number one, you got to do your diligence. You need to work with the right people. If you're 70 years old and you need the money to live off um, and you're not, you know, I think well-versed enough in the business you're buying, you should talk to a financial professional. I'm not saying don't do it. It's your money. I can't tell you what to do, but you need to talk to financial advisors, business brokers, and understand the risks. Um, <clears throat> clearly, what's happening now, what happened in 2009, is there's obviously very high unemployment. Okay, Some industries are just not coming back. A lot of travel and leisure. So what we're seeing in the last four or five months is people are using the ROBS to buy a job. Okay, they're, they're looking to buy a business that's operational, that they can jump right into and earn a salary. They're not worried about the exit today. They want a job. Okay, and that's what you saw in 08 and 09. And that's what you're seeing today, where people say, okay, this business generates four or 500,000 revenue, I can pay myself 50, 60 grand a year. That makes sense to me, I will use some retirement money to invest in it, because I need a job. Okay, and I don't care what the IRS says about whether it's a good or not investment, it's allowable and I need a job and I want steady cash flow. I'm going to do it. And again, it's, it's, everyone has a right to do what they want with their money, do your research, work with professionals, know the risks. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's your money. Adam, we have, a, we have some questions that are popping up when we're doing this live right yeah. here from business brokers around the country. We've got uh, one question. They're excellent questions, too. Can a business owner uh, use their 401k, an existing business owner, use their 401k to, to expand their operation or, or to uh, open up another location? Yeah, amazing question. Yes, you can. If you have a 401k, current 401k, you may need to amend the plan to allow for the purchase of qualifying employer securities, the C-Corp stock. One caveat to that is if you have other employees in the business, you need to offer your employees the same right that you would receive, meaning you would have to give them the same right to buy corporate stock at the fair market value that your 401k would buy it at. So that's another wrinkle that you would need to think about. If you have a current 401k plan and current employees, you may have to give them the right to also buy into the company. Tell me if I'm mistaken on this, Adam. If if a business owner owns a uh, you know a, a a you know this type of business and they want to open up an entirely different business, completely different business, and they want to do it with their 401k and they want to do a Rob's 401k, blah blah blah, with this business, even though they're completely unrelated, they still have to offer the the employees over here a 401 401k plan, right? Well, there's something called control group rules. And under the control group rules, which is in the tax code, it says if you own more than 80% of two or more businesses, or there's affiliated services, or there's a brother-sister relationship, the IRS and the Department of Labor will consider them one business for purposes of 401ks. So yes, if, if I owned 80% of business ABC, and now want to start business uh, CDE, even if it's at a different industry, I'd be considered to have one business for 401k purposes. All right, excellent. Adam, did we miss anything today when we're talking about the, uh, uh, the Rob's 401k? Uh, well, I mean, we kind of touched on everything. We did a really good job, pretty in depth. I'm trying to keep it you know, pretty basic um, because there are a lot of nuts and bolts. The good news is for business brokers or um, you know, individuals that are looking to buy a business, you don't have to know much about Rob's. You work with an expert firm. They will take you through everything and teach you everything you need to know. Again, the most important thing is the business. At the end of the day, the ROBS, there's many companies that can set it up very well. There's many excellent professionals that will help you through it. The key is you work with the right people, financial advisors, business brokers, lawyers, accountants, buy the right business, and the rest will take care of itself. If you have a buyer that's interested or you are a buyer and you're interested in doing a for, uh, Rob's 401k and, you want to, and if this person wants to buy a small business and they don't want to pay ta penalty or taxes and uh, they want to do a Rob's 401k, call Adam, Adam Bergman. He's great. He's with IRA Financial. Adam, I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. I really appreciate it. And for you guys out there, what I'd love for you guys to do, if you could just take a moment, you should subscribe to the YouTube channel. It'd be greatly appreciated. Again, in the comments section, let us know if you have had a buyer that has done a Rob's 401k or not. I'm, I'm assuming most of us haven't. And I'd love to know what, what, if, if we've, if, how prevalent it is out there in, 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 with buyers and with business brokers. So please comment. And if you have done a, a, um, a deal where the buyer's done a Rob's 401k, 
you know, give us a brief description of how that went. Love to hear it. The more educated all of us business burgers can, can become with each other, the better it is. So I really appreciate it. Like always, until next time, work hard, work smart, and keep making those buyer-seller connections.